mostly I didn't get much media coverage. I didn't even think about it. It just wasn't a goal. I really didn't care. And uh, in New York City, again, it really wasn't relevant until I was at the Food Network. Hi, I'm Sarah Moulton of Sarah's Secrets. You're watching where I was for 10 years. I did 1,500 shows for those guys. And I remember back then feeling like I am just not getting the press that the boys are. You know, Emeril and Mario and Bobby, they always, it was always all about them. You know, the billboards on the side of the buses or on the bus, on the telephone booths, no more telephone booths, but back then there were, you know, there just were never me. I rarely made it in there. And uh, that was really frustrating. It wasn't until this new woman came in, Brooke Johnson, in 19, 2000, and I think it was 2003, and she sort of switched the demographic of the Food Network. And it reached, originally, oddly enough, the demographic was for women, something like 18 to 35. Even so, they still promoted the men. And then Brooks switched it to men, like 18 to 35. I don't know the exact age, but that was the target audience. And she started having pretty young women on the Food Network with low-cut shirts. And suddenly, those women got a lot of publicity. So things sort of switched, I'd say, in 2003. Not that some of those women weren't very good cooks, but they were promoting them sort of as these, sex, you know, sort of sexy broads. But what I've noticed is when I came to New York, for the whole time I've been there, up until, say, about eight years ago, that about every three, four years would be this article in the Wednesday section of the New York Times, where are all the women chefs? And I'd be like, that is such a stupid headline. I know where they are. They're all being kept in closets and under rocks because this, at least for the first 10, 15 years I was in New York, it was still all European male chefs running the restaurants and women were just not allowed in. So it just drove me bananas. What do you think um, are ways to address ways that we can get to a more equitable industry? God damn it, you were really putting pressure <laughs> on me. There's I don't, no right or wrong answer. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I really do not have an answer. I think it's important for women to continue to help women. I think, you know, it, it, you can't keep it small because it's got to get larger but you know by networking and and helping people to get jobs and move on we just really have to look out for each other because I'm not saying there are there are some great men out there who've done some wonderful things and and for women but you can't count on it so we just have to keep helping each other and slowly I mean it's so much better than it was I believe that the biggest problem in kitchens, and I'm not saying that sexual harassment isn't real and sometimes isn't really hurtful. I think the biggest problem is that women just aren't given the opportunity they should be given. They're kept down, they're kept out, they're kept back. Um, and I know that a lot of my friends in the industry feel the same way. It's I'm not belittling or saying that it's, believe me, I told you, I've been sexually harassed not in the kitchen, and it was really very upsetting to me, very upsetting. Um, so I'm not belittling that, but I'm just saying the bigger issue and the more pervasive issue is this shutout. Um, the sexual harassment thing is, it's you're all in it together. The thing about working in a restaurant, every night you're fighting a war. And some nights you win a few battles and some nights you lose a few battles and sometimes you win them all and sometimes you lose them all. But it sets up this kind of camaraderie and this tension. Uh, you don't work in a restaurant kitchen unless you like that. And part of it is letting off steam. And part of letting off steam is joking. And part of joking for, for us or my, in my experience is occasionally having fun making sexual jokes, but nothing explicit, just ridiculous. I still feel that you could have that culture of letting off steam, but at the same time being sensitive to, um, or conscious of, not even like, you know, having to tiptoe around, just being conscious of those things and the language you use around. Oh, absolutely. I'm not suggesting anybody say horrible, you know, sexual things in the kitchen. 
at all. I mean, why would I do that? I mean, no. I mean, I, I don't appreciate it. And I, I will say this, that it, because of the Me Too movement, uh, what encourages me most about it, besides the fact that people who've done horrible things are now being you know, outed, is that I think it's empowering women to not even s- start to put up with something. I think, unfortunately, a lot of us are hardwired to be nice, make nice, make everybody feel comfortable, put ourselves last, just be in the background. And I think that now I feel different, you know, and I'm not a spring chicken. I'm just not putting up with that, any of that anymore. And I used to, even as a chef, I would. So what do you hope for the future of the industry in your like ideal dream scenario? What does it look like? I would love it if you didn't have to say woman chef, if you just said chef. I hope we get to that.